Welcome to the final video. This is video five of the five mistakes manifesto video series that I've been putting together. We've covered a lot of ground in the last five days, basically, or four days, uh, trying to get you to understand what mistakes you're making in business and why and what you can do about them. So uh, just as a little recap, uh, uh, the day one, we went through um, the business mistakes, all of the com most common business mistakes that everybody is making. Uh, day two, we went through all of the top nine marketing mistakes that you are all making in your business on a regular basis. So if you've missed any of these, go and check them out. They're all on the YouTube channel. They're also in the Facebook Fearless Business group as well. Uh, so here we go. This is the top 10 sales mistakes, uh, top 10 systems mistakes. And today we are going to be covering the finance mistakes. So uh, let me just bring myself in here. Hello, everybody. Hello, this is me, Robin Waite, your fearless business coach, uh, talking about the mistakes manifesto and all of the most common mistakes that people are making in their business. So um, first things first, let me have a look what's coming up first. So you don't do numbers. Oh, this one's come up several times, actually, across the board, because sometimes we go, I, I just not very good at maths. So I don't do numbers, you know. So we just delegate responsibility and we give it to somebody else. And then we wonder why we end up getting things like fines from HMRC and various other government departments. And our tax appears to all be wrong and things like that because maybe we haven't taken the time to choose the right accountant. But if we actually knew at least a little bit about the numbers within our business before we started up, and by the way, it's your legal obligation to get this stuff right. Um, you can't just delegate this to a financial controller or an accountant or a bookkeeper or somebody else. And if it goes wrong, it's their fault. Um, it, you're actually legal, legally obliged. Your name is on you know, the company's house returns and things like that. You're legally obliged to, to, to know this stuff um, because it's all in your name. So um, you can't use an excuse like you don't do numbers. You should at least understand the basics of things like profit and loss and stuff like that cash flow forecasts and various other things. Just the headline numbers so at least you can not delegate responsibility but you can delegate the task and those are two very different things. Uh, and also you don't appear to do any bookkeeping or filing. Um, we end up, uh, there are people who end up with big bags full of receipts still and take them to their accountant and expect them to make sense of it. You know, stuff that's over a year old uh, or longer than that probably in many cases and it's just making everybody's life difficult so again like if you just make sure you just do some very basic bookkeeping like uploading your expenses and receipts into something like zero or quickbooks it helps absolutely everybody and it also means that you're no longer delegating responsibility you're starting to understand the task uh, at hand and also when we get around to making tax digital in a year or two's time um, you've got to be doing quarterly returns. So all of this like manual bag full of receipt stuff is just going to be an absolute nightmare. And I think most accountants are going to want to go digital, like fully online and not have to deal with bags of receipts. I mean, if I was an accountant, I certainly wouldn't want to. Uh, also, this is, this is a financial mistake, but everything appears to be about getting the sale. Nothing else matters in your business, including the, the financial like cash flow forecasts, whether you're actually making a profit on that money coming in, all you're interested in is making a sale. Um, it gets to the stage with many small business owners where they are just desperate to get money into their business. And I get it, I've been there, but you've also got to understand exactly why you're allowing that to happen. And also that it, numbers, finances aren't just about making money. You've got to be making a profit as well. It's not just about that front end sale. It's about what's going on the back end of your business. Uh, also, most people, most businesses, I think that I've read a stat that something ridiculous like 60% of small business owners in the UK earn less than the nav national average salary. Uh, so that's outside of London, which I think is about £26,500 now. 60% of business owners are earning less than they would do if they had a job, which is, um, I guess we get benefits in terms of like the flexibility, uh, running a business around our family and things like that, holidays when we need them, you know, I totally get all of that. Um, but equally, like business doesn't just go like straight line or even just a flat line of money coming in. Business goes like this. It's like a, a, a wibbly wobbly eel just like going up and down all of the time. And so we don't have a war chest um, for when everything goes tits up, basically. And at some point, it will. Like I can guarantee it. I've seen it with pretty much every business I've worked with. Um, 
you know, we, we uh, even as a business coach, you try and um, get your clients to sort of create stability within their business, make more money so that the hard times are less hard. But equally, like, you know, sales are sporadic, like they, they go up and down, they're lumpy. So when things go wrong or when you have a lean few weeks, like you want to have a bit of a war chest built up uh, just so you don't have to worry about where the money comes from. Oh, this one's a good one. So you don't know what the difference is between net profit, gross profit, oh, sorry, gross overhead, Apple turnovers, and think that the balloon ride is a legitimate expense. Um, these, these, I mean, there's a whole raft of different mistakes going on there. Um, but just simple things like um, knowing what um, turnover or revenue or sales, your sales is at the top line compared to what your overheads are, i.e. how much your money you're spending, and then what profit is coming out of the bottom of it and how much of that you can actually keep, because there is also something called tax, and if you're VAT registered, it's even more complicated. Um, and also, you can't just jack everything through, um, through expenses. Uh, what you can have, though, what you can have is um, uh, non, it's like benefit in kind, if you like, so non-taxable benefits, uh, you know, or non-taxable expenses, benefits, however you want to describe them, basically. Um, so most people try and put everything through their business to avoid paint or um, uh, to write off against their tax. Um, but the reality is not everything can go in, go in as a tax, taxable benefit. So um, you just got to know some of the core basics about like the monies within your business. It's not really, it's not even rocket science. Um, oh, this is a good one. So you overspend. So I've seen people have like brilliant months. I've done it myself as well in, in both of my businesses. You have a great month, spend all of the money, and then um, you have nothing left when you have the lean months. So this is similar to the war chest thing. Um, so don't worry. Uh, we've all been there. I've been there. Um, but it also teaches you, you have to go through it almost in order to teach you how to like manage your money a bit better so that you don't spend everything that's in your bank account. Um, what else is there? You underspend. So basically you leave money in the business when you could be investing it in marketing activities or, or, uh, or hiring somebody or other things like growing the business. So I know businesses where they've just got loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of money saved away, which again, like it's great to have a war chest, but, um, like have a plan for that money and an underspending, for example, on marketing and then wondering why your business isn't growing, you're not making sales. Um, you know, I see that all of the time. So, and, and it's not just about like going out and spending loads of money on marketing. It's about spending it um, wisely, um, you know, in the right places. So working smarter, not harder, or working smarter, not more expensively. Uh, what else is there? Uh, cash flow is a mess. You don't, if you don't, A, if you don't know what cash flow is, that's a big mistake. Um, but equally, like the moment your money comes in, it's gone. So there's no cash flow, basically. All it is is just, um, it's just a, uh, like money flows in money flows out and like the business is just this um thing that allows money to flow in and out and that's it um so again like having a bit of a plan about like what money you're going to be spending in one month three months six months time is really really important um and making sure that you're on top of all of the bills like a mistake i see quite often is people who have lots of invoices and bills coming in but they don't actually put them into a um, they don't file them. They don't. They don't put them into like Zero or QuickBooks or whichever platform they're using, and so then all of a sudden they start to get loads of chasing letters. And now we've spent the money, and uh, it's all getting a bit sticky. Um, also, this is a big mistake. People pay themselves last or like the least. So they'll have staff, and the staff will always get paid before themselves. Now, you know, or the VAT man gets paid first, or the uh, your suppliers get paid first and all those sorts of things. Now, I'm kind of a big fan of, well, look, you know, we've all got mortgages and we have families and a roof to keep over our head. So pay those people first, pay yourself first so that you can afford to live. So you're not worrying about like just, you know, the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is all about security um, in for oneself, like having, having family around you and having a roof over your head. So if you don't have those, you're not going to be firing on all cylinders in your business. Um, and what you don't want is to, A, not being firing on, all cylinders in business and worrying about your mortgage payment because otherwise it'll just just it'll be a complete head fuck basically it'll be a total mess uh, and then finally and this is a big one that you don't actually bother to engage an accountant or you do it as cheaply as possible now in my opinion like an accountant is there to do my reports and and help me out with um tax savings that otherwise i would normally miss as a as a layman non-accountant 
um, and to give me advice on what I can and can't be doing with the money within my business. Um, they should also be helping me to explore ways that I can grow. So there's an advisory side to it. So there's a lot of benefits to having an accountant. It's not just about getting your returns in it at the end of the day. And kind of if you think that having a, an accountant is about just getting the returns in at the end of every year, like you're missing the point. They can add so much more money to your to your business, so much more value to your business than you think. So do get out there and like pay an accountant and they can help you with all of this stuff to help you stop making all of these mistakes. Um, I know that um, I've got two accountants, one in each of my businesses, and they they help them help those businesses out and me out massively. They they make me back five times the amount of money which I spend on them. So I would wholeheartedly recommend you get an accountant, 100%. Um, if you want to stop making these mistakes, so I'm a big firm believer of getting experts in, not least because I'm a business coach and I believe that every business should have a coach, a mentor, a friend that they can turn to, an accountant or whatever, uh, some kind of an expert within their business, uh, then go and sign up uh, to uh, robinwaitecom forward slash fearless forward slash application. You can apply to join the Fearless crew. It's only £47 a month, but you can get access to the best business advice on this planet, uh, certainly in the UK and definitely in Gloucestershire and the Southwest. Um, so you get access to me, you get access to webinar Q&A sessions, you get turbo calls from me, uh, you get access to all my e-learning programs, I give you a copy of all of my books. There's loads of cool stuff which you get out of being in the Fearless Crew. Uh, there's a group of awesome people you can also get accountability and support from. And that's about it really. Or head on over to fearless.biz. You can find more information about me over there. But stop making bloody mistakes, people. That's the end of the mistakes manifesto. 50 top business mistakes that all business owners are making. Uh, and I am done. <laughs>